Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Brian Weber. Thank you for tuning in to my YouTube video. And from this one, I'm going to be talking about my self-sabotage that I experienced over the past, uh, previously it was like two, three months ago. And I'm gonna walk you through the, some of the, like the entire process, like the cycle I went through and what actually triggered it in the first place. And I'll go through each step and like describe some of the emotions and the mistakes that I made which caused me to lose money trading and pretty much sabotage myself. Um, so let's jump into one of the main reasons why this happened before I get into the actual cycle. So originally I would trade with a strategy that I was comfortable with and I knew that made money looking at the longer time frames of the market using like fibs, trend lines, uh, strong levels where there was a lot of volume. Um, some of the studies that I have on Thinkorswim, um, they're DMI studies, and then also I would look at RSI and like the John Carter squeeze for, for momentum plays. And I took, I was very profitable in that, in that sense using those strategies that I have and that I've been using for like over a year. So I decided to join a trading room that taught only order flow. So I went from like a macro perspective where I was looking at strong support and resistance levels, the overall trend, to looking at tick by tick, order like order by order coming on the footprint chart and seeing in real time like what are people, what are the buyers and sellers actually doing. So it's, it, it went from like a macro perspective to a very micro perspective. And in that sense, it, it made me change my strategy based on what was recommended and I had to use, I used tighter stops and also the profit targets were shorter um, just to make the risk reward ratio you know adequate and it, it didn't go so well like it started out okay but it resulted in a lot more trades a lot more losses because of the tight stops and the volatility wicking me out thus triggering this self-sabotage cycle that I'm gonna walk you guys through. Um, so let's dive in to uh, the gist of everything. Like, let's just get right to it. All right, so first of all, this is the first step. So we have me here. And step one, what triggered it and the whole the whole strategy that changed differently was like instead of using fibs levels and you know bigger levels to trade off of i had zones that were there was a lot more areas for potential trades which made uh made me take more trades but also made me like a little bit more impatient because um i just feel like since i had a shorter a smaller stop loss and i had a smaller more importantly I had a smaller profit target that I could take more trades and I felt antsy and I feel like all I need to do is make, you know, three, four or five points on NQ, like less than two points in ES, you know, like that's achievable. It doesn't even have to be in my zone, you know, because when I used to trade my other strategy that I went back to, I would get, I would catch the bigger moves, you know, like catch and get up to like 10, 20 points on ES, for example, and instead of catching like these micro moves. So the first thing that actually happened was I would take trades out of my zones because I was looking for those quick profit targets just trying to get like a nice quick entry off of like a buy imbalance sell imbalance and just get in and get out really quick like scalping that's pretty much what it was I mean I thought I used to be a scalper when I would take like two points at a time or three points on ES and I realized like that's not scalping that's actually like Scalping is taking like tick or two or four ticks, five ticks and like getting out and then getting right back in, like taking a shitload of trades and just killing your mental capital. And that's what ended up happening to me. So once I would take trades out of my zones, what, what would you think would happen right after I did that? Next thing that would happen was, would be the trade goes against me almost immediately. So you can imagine once that happens, I'm, my fear is going up and my anxiety 
stress level is going up because I'm like, holy shit, I just entered the trade and I was looking to make a quick buck, you know, pretty much entering the middle of nowhere, middle of the freeway, I like to say. And as soon as I do that, my tight stop is already almost getting hit. So what that happens is like my, my heart rate is increasing, my fear, because my fear is going up, my anxiety, my fear of losing and fear of losing money. It starts to kick in like on a level that I've never felt ever before uh, on trading because at least before in my last strategy I would give myself a chance with wider stops like more of a cushion to let the trade work out in this case if you're wrong you're wrong like almost instantly and you'd be losing you'd get stopped out because there's no there's no room there's no playroom for the price to wiggle around and so what happens right after that so once a trade go against me the fear, my fear is increasing, anxiety is going up. Um, I, I'm probably forgetting that I'm not even breathing at this point, so my rational brain isn't really working anymore. So at this point, it's just all behavioral stuff that you build up over time, like bad habits start kicking in. It only takes one time to start triggering a habit like this, and then you'll eventually kick yourself into this loop, like a habit loop, where you'll continue to do it until you change some way or another that started the whole thing in the process, that started the process in the first place, like trading a whole different strategy that you're not comfortable with. So what happens next? N happens next is this is where the discipline breaks down. So I either move my stop, because I think the trade's gonna work, I'm confident in the trade, I know, or I, it's not even that, because number one, I'm taking the trade not even in a support or resistance zone, um, because I want, I feel the need to get into a trade. So I move the stop thinking like, oh, I'll just give it a little bit more room. You know, I'll move the stop under where it originally should have been, thus increasing my risk substantially. And then if I don't, if I move the stop, which w almost always happened, move the stop and then, and then add to the position because it's now in the level where I should have bought it in the first place, but now I'm already in a losing trade and the risk is more than I already planned to use to, to use in this trade, but yet I go ahead and add in the area that I should originally went long with the tight stop that I had. And now my leverage and my, my risk on this one trade is now as much as like two or three trades. So at this point, I'm hoping that the that this losing position will come back and get me out for like a tick or break even because now I'm just desperate to get out for no loss at all. So what happens next? You can imagine majority of the time nothing good happens after this. So what happens after this? I might need to make this a little bit bigger. So get stopped out stopped out for a big loss. And at this point, I'm pissed off. I, I can't believe I just did that. I should have made money on that trade even though um, I lost the money. Like I feel like I was right even though the market told me I was clearly wrong because I made every mistake in the book at this point. You know, as an as an amateur trader would do and this is this is like I feel like what most beginner traders at one form or another will go through this cycle. If, if you haven't and you've been trading for a while, um, uh, I wouldn't believe, believe you that you haven't had experiences like this because this happens because it's, I would say, 80% psychology in trading. It's like the 80-20 rule Pareto principle. But after I get stopped out for a big loss, you can imagine this is where the revenge trading comes into play. This is where you really fuck yourself with uh, trading. And this is why most people give up and this is how most people blow up their accounts really fast. So originally here, I had one lot. So I had one lot here. Let's say I had two lots here. So now I got stopped out, I'm pissed, okay. And now I'm looking to get a trade almost immediately, take another trade right away when I obviously should not do that. You know, you should take a break, five, 10, 20 minutes, whatever it takes, go walk outside, come back. But no, the, the emotions are brewing. I've lost my ability to think logically. It's straight emotions right now at this point because I'm, I'm not feeling good right now. I'm, I'm riled up. 
So right now what happens is revenge trade with two or four lots or sometimes more. If you don't know what revenge trading is, that means almost immediately after you get stopped out, you're entering the market right back again. Like you're, you're like pissed you got stopped out and you're, and you're entering almost immediately, sometimes that market, to get stopped out again because that wasn't a good planned trade. You're just trading on emotion, hitting buttons that you shouldn't be. At, at, once you got to this point and you got stopped out for the first loss, that's when you should have stopped for the day. But tell you what, it's really hard sometimes to control yourself once you get to that point. And the one way to stop this, and I'll talk about it, is to not even get to number one. Because once you get to number one, that's it's you already started that loop. So once you revenge trade, once I was revenge trading, took a, me a trade immediately after I lost, more position sizing because I was thinking, you know what, I had used two lots on this, I lost like, I don't know, three, four hundred bucks. All I need to do is make a, like a scalp, a winning scalp with some more contracts and I'll get the money right back and I'll be back to break even. Yeah, that might work sometimes, but then there'll be some times where you really get kicked in the balls and that's what happens and get stopped out again and sometimes instead of getting stopped out this might happen again move the stop and keep adding to it where you really really that's how you that's how you really dig your account into an early death right there into the grave you know and it it could take one one day and you could lose thousands of dollars just by doing this. And then after that happens, you get stopped out again. So at this point, you're really pissed and maybe you get to the point at this, at this area where you've lost enough and the pain is too much and you can't take it anymore. So you decide to stop trading. You lost a couple hundred, a couple thousand, whatever it is, whatever your pain threshold is. You realize, holy shit, what did I just do? I can't believe I just did that. Is this real? Refreshing your balance on your broker. Did I really just lose that much money? And you did because you didn't follow you didn't follow your original plan to take the trades that you should have in your zone. And I will say right now that sometimes even when I would take trades in my zone, this would still happen because of the tight stops. I would get wicked out because the stop was so tight, and it would go against me, and I would get pissed and try to chase the market after that point. So that's using a whole different strategy with the tight stops that this whole thing it triggered other versions of what I'm describing right now and then after this revenge trading is pissed you off and you've hit max loss that you can take and now here you promise yourself you'll never do it again never again and we're human beings, we're full of emotion, and the only reason why we do this is it makes us feel good. That It makes us feel like it's okay that we just lost that much money because it'll never happen again. Like, I will never be that stupid to do that again. But in reality, all it takes is this to ha happen again, take a trade out of your zone, and then this whole thing will happen again to the point where it'll result in a bigger loss or a decent, Trump trains here. I live right next door to the train track. <laughs> but anyways, so once you get to this point, you're trying to promise yourself, I'm not going to do this again. And but I'm telling you, if you don't change the original thing that caused you to start this cycle in the first place, you'll continue to make the same mistake until you have no money left. And that's when I realized, um, I think I lost like 25% of my account. That's because I only trade with like a tw like twelve to $15,000 account, like 10 to 15 because it ranges. And I lost like two or $3,000 doing this. And at that point I was like, okay, I, I gotta stop because this isn't, this isn't gonna work, you know? Um, so at this point, I realized I gotta break this cycle right here. So I gotta start with number one. 
taking trades out of my zone. But even more importantly, why did I trade? Why did I switch my profitable strategy for something completely different? Because I felt like some people knew more than I did, so I should listen to them, and their strategy is better than what I do. Even though I'm making money from it, these guys claim that you know this is the holy grail strategy. This order flow is the best best tool to use in futures trading. I'm sure it is. It's great for everyone, but it's not good for everyone. Um, it's not good. It's it's good for someone, but it's not good for everyone. You know. That's why trading is always about knowing yourself, knowing what you're comfortable with, strategies that you know, and keeping it very simple and consistent and not changing anything when it's working. So I'm really curious to know from you guys that are following me, have you guys or gals ever experienced your own version of your self-sabotage cycle and your journey as a trader? And I would really love to hear how you recognized what you were doing and then took the steps to, to fix the problems that you had, to get back on track, to be a risk manager and stop trading based on your emotions. And if you drop a comment, I would love to hear about your story. Um, and to sum up pretty much how I got over this, I kind of touched on it a little bit at the beginning of the video. So I went back to trading my, went back to trading my, profitable strategy that I'd use longer time frames. I would use um, 15 minute, 30 minute, combined with four hour and daily charts. So I would wait for like the bigger levels to trade off of as opposed to like these little tiny buy imbalances and sell imbalances in the middle of where the market is. Um, I look for like oversold and overbought conditions to, to look to take counter trend fades. And then if we're trending, try to try to buy the pullbacks or short the rips, you know? And on the bigger picture, it's much easier to be profitable and take, more importantly, you take less trades, you know? I, I take like two, three trades a day now, as opposed to when I used to do this strategy, I took like, no shit, like 15, 20, I took 35 fucking trades one day because you know what? I have a short stop, a small stop. I can just keep trading, you know? 60 bucks, 60 bucks, 60 bucks. You know, it adds up over time when you start screwing yourself like this, especially when you start adding. And I have one day where I actually, my commission was higher, it was more than the loss that I had. I think the loss was like 200 bucks. The commission was like 300 and you're like, what the fuck did I do? You know, excuse my French. But seriously, this is real real talk and real, sh real shit in the experience that I've had. And I really got back on track almost recovered all the money already in only like two weeks and this happened in like two three months so I'm cool with that you know once you get to know yourself calm yourself down get back to your morning routine get back with the meditation the affirmations start focusing on your psychology more go back to a strategy that worked and just execute it like you used to so thank you guys so much for watching this video and I hope this was helpful for me breaking down the problems that I had and like what the step by step the things that I was going through and struggling after about a year and a half as a trader like doing well and then screwing myself by this but able to being able to recognize it and then fix it I'm pretty grateful for that instead of just keep di driving myself into the ground at least my count so thank you guys if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel please click that subscribe button that's popping up now and like I said earlier, please let me know what you guys think in the comments and share your stories and experiences as well. And have a great rest of the day, guys. Talk to you soon. Bye.